Hello dear ones, it's Alice, I am of the stars. And um, I have a short story to tell you about a science fiction movie that I saw many, many years ago. Um, at the time when the effects of science fiction movies were really rudimentary compared to today. But because we didn't know that they were going to be getting any better, we really got into those into those sci-fi effects of the early films. I remember, in fact, when I was pre-teens, I was about seven years old, I went to see the first uh, science fiction film I ever, first film that I ever saw was Fantasia. That was before this other one. And Fantasia was a beautiful movie, just beautifully beautifully rendered um, cartoon movie with absolutely exquisite music in it. I loved it. I saw it twice, I think. I was very young. It was the only movie playing. <laughs> then, uh, some years later, I went with some friends of mine to see a, a, a science fiction horror film with the very earliest science fiction effects called Rodan. It was a story of this giant monster Godzilla animal that was big as a tall building or larger and went around eating buildings and stuff. And I only could tolerate about 10 minutes of that. And then I went outside the movie theater and waited for my friends to finish the movie. So it was, for me, that scary. So that's the first story. Second story. And the third story has to do with this this movie that I saw some years later, a sci-fi movie, I think it was called The Fly, right? And then I saw it again, so um, I remember the details pretty accurately. It had to do with this extremely courageous, innovative, daring scientist who invented a machine. What did it do? Somehow, took you to the future and back, or else it um, took you, it, it rearranged your atoms, right, as some way on the way back. It's kind of like your very earliest um, beam me up Scotty idea for, for Star Trek, except this was a bad, <coughs> bad scientist notion. So, so anyway, his wife uh, saw him get into this contraption that he had invented. He was going to be the first person to ever try it out. And unfortunately, there was a fly in there too. And both of their atoms got mixed up together on the way back. And the result was um, a person with the head of a fly, which scared his wife considerably. And a fly with the head of a person which talked in this tiny little voice like the husband, only it was just so small, you could barely see it, right? So, uh, I realize that this is a, an unhappy story, yeah? But it, it, it has to do with, it has to do with the realms of reality that we are experiencing, too. I could use it. Um, a long, long time ago, the Hindus came up with a um, story that was kind of like the story I'm going to tell, based on the fly. It had to do with a god who incarnated on earth and fell in love with a pig lady and had a lot of little pig babies and forgot that he was a god, right? And. Uh, then uh, the other gods, I guess, seeing the predicament he was in, made sure that he died and came to the realization that he was no, not really a pig. And he was very surprised about that. This is a metaphor for the eternal soul, I think, and how it falls into a human carnation and forgets, um, falls into the web of cause and effect in the in the. 3D realm and um, forgets how godlike it truly is, right? So 
to get back to the story of the fly, it seems to me that, I mean, just to me, because in the third dimension, there's a dark network and a grid of light, and these two are uh, intimately entwined to the point where it's not really possible to eliminate evil uh, at one point in the grid work by a shining light on it without ratcheting up evil in the darkness in the, in the grid of light. This was before the ascension process happened. So it's, it's kind of, um, I don't know, a mousetrap effect, or it, to me it looks or feels like uh, a skein, a warp and a woof of a blanket of different colored strands woven together to create this reality. And, and uh, as I say, uh, it's not possible to make the dark lighter without making the light darker. It all has to balance out if you're just in that dimension. This causal realm, uh, people seem to me in, the, in a little bit higher realm, uh, which is also causal, the astral realm, to be like this, this um, sci-fi image of the tiny little fly with a with the head of a person crying out, help me, help me, I'm right here, right? And, the, and then the friend or wife is just sitting in an easy chair uh, on the lawn and can't hear it because it's so, the voice is so tiny. It's the voice of a fly, sort of, in the, and the mind of a person. So, so in the causal realm, we're trapped like that. We're tr trapped to the point where, and the people that I hear are like that too. It's um, it's a transformation, definitely. A transformation so that we can experience soul lessons and not done without a considerable skill on the part of our wonderful teams of angels and so forth. So, um, and it's not us. It's not us. So, I just want to explain something for those of you that are coming to the point of understanding the limitations of the third dimension and the astral plane, the fourth dimension, and you want out, right? The, uh, let's say you're experiencing an astral story and you just don't like it. You're not producing it, right? You just don't like this story and these stories, they come and go all day long in the astral plane, the fourth dimension. The way to get out, the exit door, for the uh, playhouse is your top knot up here, your eighth chakra up above your head, the bow tie that or constriction, varying constricted energy that you feel there is the producer of the astral play that you're experiencing. If you place your intention there, the, um, the knot will untie itself and you will be free of the um, transformative effects of the third and fourth dimension. You will be closer to your true godlike uh, eternal soul. So just to let you know, the escape hatch, the exit door to the causal realm is in the eighth chakra above your head and all you have to do to walk out that door is place your attention there and notice the bow tie constrictions, okay? I hope I didn't weird you out too much with the stories of the, um, the um, God who married the pig and the guy who t transformed himself partly into a, a fly. I hope you're all doing fine and having a wonderful day, enjoying beautiful sunshine or cloudy day if that's what it is. Y'all take care. Love you lots.